HitFilm is a great all-in-one visual effects and video editing software that rivals the likes of Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects. Today, I'll be introducing this software to you and reviewing it in full if you're considering purchasing it. Before we begin today's video, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for more HitFilm videos and video editing tutorials like this one, and follow my Twitter at shiny underscore films for more constant updates than I can give on YouTube. I'm going to split this video up into four main parts. The first is a general introduction of the software, then I'll talk about some of the features that I like about the software and some that I don't like, and then I'll tell you how it compares to other video editing softwares in the market and give you my final opinion. Let's start off with the introduction. HitFilm is a video editing and visual effects software that has some really powerful effects as well as a built-in editor. In comparison to other filmmaking software solutions where editor and compositor are separate, HitFilm puts the two together in one software. Some of its main features are 8K video support, advanced keyframing animation in both the editing and compositing timelines, 3D model input and 3D environment, Mocha 3D planar tracking, and a whole ton more with over 800 effects and presets for you to use. For $300 US dollars, you get a 3-seat license of the software, plus 12 months of updates and technical support. In previous versions of HitFilm, there was a huge new release every year with new features, and this latest big release in December of 2017 will probably be the last big release that they have, and instead they'll put all the great new features into the software when they get developed, rather than having to wait a full year to release them. That's what the 12 months of updates means anyway. You get the full software, plus any updates they make to it within 12 months of its release, before you have to pay more to get an updated version of the software. But when you pay for the software, you can still keep the latest version of the software that you've downloaded. Anyway, that's the introduction of the software. Now I'm going to talk about the things that I like about the software. I'm not going to read a script for this part like I have for the introduction, instead I'll be going through these features live as I'm using the software. I've already set up this project though to make it easier for me to show you all of these features. So the first thing that I really like about HitFilm is the layout. It might look a little bit messy when you're looking at it now, but trust me it's actually really simple and really easy to use. I'll start off with these four tabs up here. As you can see, I'm in the edit tab at the moment, that's where you'll spend most of your time, but you start off when you open HitFilm in the home tab. Here you can just see some tutorials from the official HitFilm YouTube channel and you've got some you know, recent projects that you can open and you can create new projects and open other projects. If you create a new project, then you'll be uh, sped into the project tab, which is the second one here. This is where you just set up your project settings such as you know, resolution, 1080p, 4K, 8K even, and your frame rate. And then once you've done that, you can hit create project or start editing and then you'll go into the edit tab which is where you know you do all of your work and then you'll also move over into the export tab later but you know that's later and I'll get to that later in the video. In the edit tab though you've got a really nice layout to work with. Right now I'm in the editing workspace which is where you have a viewer in the top right hand corner and then you've got a trimmer to trim your media before it goes into the editing timeline. Of course you've got your timeline down here, audio meters, media and your controls are up here as well. What I love though is that you can also change the workspace up really simply and it doesn't get messy. If you go to the workspace button up here, uh, you can see at the moment I'm in the editing workspace but you can also choose compositing for example which is where the viewer becomes much bigger, the trimmer becomes much smaller but we also get panels such as color scopes and we get you know lifetime for particles and all kinds of other stuff which will be much more useful when you're compositing. You can also add in specific panels if you want, for example audio meters. I might just add in uh, on the right here and that way I've just got my audio meters while I'm compositing as well. I'm going to talk to you now about why I like the editor in HitFilm so much. Because the visual effects is great but also the editor is really nice and useful. It's really easy to select clips and just import them with in and out points from the trimmer. But also when you're in the editing timeline uh, it's also really simple and really easy to move clips around and just do basic things. It's not super advanced like Premiere or anything like that, but you do have a number of different uh, tools that you can use to really fine tune your edit, uh, as well as using J and L cuts and all kinds of stuff. You can also animate in the editor, which I'll get to in a little bit, 
and uh, there's also a ton of audio effects and things for you to use here as well. Additionally, there's also transitions that you can find in the effects panel down here. A lot of them aren't really too useful, but there are the basics, of course, like cross dissolve and fade to black, and also really nice ones such as light leak, which actually look really cool. The next thing I wanna talk about is actually this effects panel, because as I mentioned in the introduction, there are over 800 effects and presets, and there are just so many good ones. I mean, if we just look in color correction and color grading, just in those two tabs, you can see just how many different effects there are. There are just an absolute ton of effects in HitFilm, and they aren't all just gimmicky effects either. They're actually really useful. What I also love is how they have different levels of effects. So I'm gonna start off with color grading here, and just to show you, if you're a real beginner, and you just wanna do some basic color correction, then you can use an effect like brightness and contrast. And that's, you know, really simple brightness and contrast. And that's just, if you're a real beginner, then you can just use effects like these. But there are also more advanced effects. For example, there's curves, which I'm sure you all know what curves are. And there are also color correction wheels, which you know look really nice and um, you know a little bit more advanced to use, but you know still really, really great effects. And also in color grading, there's a whole ton of stuff as well. There's really advanced effects that you can use, uh, as you can see here, but there's also really easy ones. If you don't even know how to color grade, and you just want a cinematic look, just grab Cinestyle effect, and it'll automatically apply color effects, curves effects, um, and all kinds of things, a letterbox steel clip, and just makes it look really cinematic. But it's also customizable. Because effects is really kind of the best thing about HitFilm, I'm going to move into some more effects by going into a composite shot that I created earlier. You'll notice that now we're in the editor, which is, you know, where we can put clips next to each other, side by side. Of course, you can also put clips on top of each other as well. But if you want to put clips on top of each other and do compositing, then you're much better off in a composite shot. And you can create one by going new composite shot, or you can even create one right out of a clip by pressing right click, make composite shot. I'm just going to go into this one that I created earlier. Anyway, this is just an example of green screening. Here I've got uh, some effects which enable me to create a really nice green screen. I've got a mask, which is the first thing I did to this clip. And then I've also got a color difference key, which is just a really basic uh, green screen keyer, but it's also really effective. So if you're just a beginner to green screening and keying like me, then you can use this effect. There's also a chroma key effect, which is super advanced, but I'm just not got that level, so I don't use that effect yet. But it's really advanced keying that you can do here as well. I've got spill removal, uh, just to get rid of that green, and also a light wrap, uh, just to make sure it blends in better with the background. So that's an example of just some of the really useful effects in HitFilm. I'm just going to go to the beginning here. You can see this, oh, I've also got this shatter effect, which I just thought I'd include because it's, you know, a pretty cool effect. Anyway, moving on, I've got this image of Arnold Schwarzenegger here. And this is the original image. Uh, it's just him with a gun. But one of the effects that I really like is the gunfire effect. They've got a whole bunch of 3D effects. And yeah, this is a completely 3D muzzle flash. So not only does this effect have, you know, rate of fire, color, and you can adjust all the core and side flares, really fine tune this muzzle flash. I've just left everything on default for simplicity. But what's really nice about these effects are these are in full 3D. So if I just grab this Y rotation here, you'll notice that I can just rotate this in the Y space and you look, it's just a full 3D muzzle flash and you can animate it in whichever way you want. So that, you know, if you've got whatever kind of project you've got, if you've got someone with a gun that's moving around all over the place, you can still have this tracked and uh, in 3D looking really great. I've also got some lighting effects here, which is really just a simple curves effect on this gray layer with three masks, uh, just to make sure it's uh, in the right kind of place. But also in this kind of 3D tangent, HitFilm has really more advanced 3D work. I'm not an expert in uh, 3D in HitFilm, but you can, of course, import 3D models. For example, I've got this uh, this walker here, uh, from this at, at walker from Star Wars. And you know, I've got some two lights here, which I can use to light it. And just this, uh, this layer here to make sure these hedges are put in front of it. But you'll notice it's, you know, a full 3D thing. If I go down into the model here, and I go down into the world transform, you'll notice how I just say rotate it on the Y. It's a full 3D model that's been properly imported uh, into HitFilm. And uh, you can track this to objects, you can do all kinds of things with it. 
In fact, what I'm going to show you now is I've even got an Alembic animation uh, tied with this model. So if I just scroll down here, you'll notice I've got this Alembic animation and you can even just straight up apply this uh, here. So under models, under the walker, and then just drag this onto animations. Uh, the scale is a bit off, so I'm just going to reset that real quick. But you'll notice now we've got you know an animated walking 8080 walker uh, inside of our hit film project. And of course, you know, I haven't added shadows or anything super advanced like that. I mean, that's not even advanced, but I haven't added anything like that. But you can see that this is really cool and the visual effects inside of HitFilm is actually quite advanced. Of course, all of these effects that I showed you today are just a tiny, tiny snippet of all the 800 effects and presets inside of HitFilm. There's also, you know, particle simulator effects. And if you just want to see how good the particle simulator is in HitFilm, you can check out their latest short Halo Jump where they recreated shot for shot the uh, Godzilla Halo jump scene and it's really really great. All the visual effects were created in hit film, all the clouds using the particle simulator and they're just really professional looking and they just look awesome. So that's a really good example of uh, the visual effects of hit film if you want to go check that out. But they've also added in this latest version, they've added the puppet tool, you know, they've got really cool distortion effects. I mean, you just need to go and, and check out all of these effects because they've got a whole ton of really cool ones in here. I also want to show you animation in here film because it's not super advanced. You can't input, you know, uh, equations and all kinds of things into hit film, but it does have a really nice keyframing system. You know, if I just uh, make this into a composite shot right here, I can just, you know, grab any effect really and uh, just animate it. I'm going to grab just this really simple blur effect. There's also a lens blur in HitFilm which looks really great, but I'm just going to grab a, a simple blur effect and you'll notice that if I go down here, just open this effect up, I can just change, uh, you know, I can just start keyframing things. So I'll just, at this point, I'll make the, uh, the value zero and I'll just hit this button to add a keyframe here and then here I'll make it, you know, 50, just really blurred. Actually, I might move this all the way out here so that it's not quite so harsh. And you know, these are constant keyframes. You can also adjust the interpolation. If I just go in the value graph, you can really see what it's doing here. You know, it goes straight from zero to 50 at the moment, but if we make this constant, it'll just go bam like that. Uh, just go straight to 50 rather than, you know, going constantly from zero to 50. But you can also have smooth, which looks like this. Uh, you know, you can have smooth in or smooth out. And you've also got manual bezier, which is, which is kind of just smooth. But also you can adjust the, the handles and create your own, you know, unique interpolation. You can also keyframe in the editor. So, for example, in this shot, it's a time lapse, as you can see. And it kind of starts off in the night and then the sun starts to rise and then it gets brighter. In reality, it would be a lot darker in the beginning here than it actually is. So I'm just going to grab, say, a really simple brightness and contrast effect. I'm just going to drop that on here. And I'm just going to set a keyframe for the beginning for it to be like minus 50 or something. Quite dark. And then around this point, I'm just going to set it to be zero. And again, if you pull, if you press this button here, the display timeline, just zoom in. You'll notice we can have the same keyframing controls with all the interpolation and uh, everything the same as we did uh, in the composite shot. Also, I just want to touch up on the export system. It's really easy to export things in HitFilm. You can either export the contents or export in and out area, which you can define in the editing timeline with the I and the O keys. But usually, you know, you'd export just contents and you just go and hit export contents and then you can either continue editing or go straight to the export queue. So I'm just going to go to the export queue. You can select a preset from all of the presets over here or create a custom preset. Uh, and, you know, it's just really easy to use. And then even if you add multiple items to this queue, it'll just export them one after another. It's similar to, you know, Premiere or, you know, any other, a lot of different editing applications. But what I really like about this, as well as with a lot of the other stuff in HitFilm, is that the layout and just the way they've implemented it is really easy to use. So I've talked a lot of good stuff about HitFilm, but here's some of the stuff I actually don't like about HitFilm and I find kind of lacking about it. The first thing is a warp stabilizer. Premiere and After Effects are very well known for their warp stabilizers and they just work really well in those programs, but unfortunately HitFilm doesn't have a warp stabilizer 
at all. And the only way you can stabilize your footage in HitFilm is to track it with the, the built-in 2D tracker, not even the Mocha tracker that comes with this. I don't think so anyway. But the only way to stabilize stuff in HitFilm, uh, according to my knowledge anyway, is to just track it using the 2D tracker. And then using the 2D tracker, you can kind of stabilize that tracked point to make it, you know, in the center of the frame or in one point in the frame at all times. And also you can stabilize rotation and scale, but it's not a warp stabilizer. It's not very smooth and it just doesn't work super well. So that's kind of one of the bad things about HitFilm. In HitFilm, I also don't like performance issues, but this is really just because of my computer. When I edit in something like iMovie or Final Cut because I have a Mac, it just works really well. I've got a 21 inch iMac from 2013 just the base model so it's not a supercomputer by any means and so if you've seen me with performance lagging or you know not perfect performance in this video it's probably just because you've got a better computer than me but performance in hit film used to be much worse now they have fixed it so performance actually isn't really an issue for most people uh, especially if you've got an Nvidia graphics card it works much better on Nvidia graphics cards but for me, it's just a little bit of a problem that I like to point out. Also, something that really bugs a lot of people when they use HitFilm is, you know, the layout between the composite shots and the editor. Because you've got both of them in the one program, you've got to find a really seamless way to integrate them. They have been done pretty well, especially with the way that editor uh, keyframing has come along in this most recent version. But it's still hard to do things like apply grades to all of your clips here. There is ways that you can create presets and then apply that to all of your clips here but then if you want to remove them that's kind of hard you can't create adjustment layers in the editing timeline which is a little bit annoying you know little things like that and you don't have ram preview in the editor either which you do have in the composite shot so um you know the way that these two uh timelines differ is just a little bit weird in HitFilm, and it might take you some time to get used to it also text used to be really hard to do in HitFilm. you'd have to go in a composite shot and that's the only place you could create text and then you'd have to go a new layer text and then you know create a text box and just type in some text in here but in the editor you couldn't do that you'd have to create a composite shot and then drag the comp into the editor for every little bit of text that you wanted to create but now it's easier because they have a text effect so i'm not really complaining about this anymore they've actually got a really cool text effect and uh, it works really well you can add subtitles so that's actually you know, something they've added in the latest version of HitFilm, which has come over some of its mistakes uh, in previous versions. Just to give you my final thoughts and conclusions on HitFilm and who I'd recommend it for, I don't recommend it for anyone who, you know, is making a living off visual effects and is doing super high advanced stuff and high advanced editing because, you know, there are other programs which are kind of more suited towards you. I think that HitFilm is for people who want to get into editing and visual effects but also for people who are already into editing and visual effects, who just want a nice to use software that doesn't cost heaps, doesn't have a, a monthly subscription that adds up and eats into you, and it just has a simple workflow and workspace. And I think that for beginner filmmakers and filmmakers who don't require too much visual effects, maybe people like YouTubers, you know, those kinds of people, to those people I would totally recommend HitFilm because it's really worth it and it's got a great set of features that you can use. Thanks for watching today's video. If you did enjoy this video, then of course be sure to give it a like, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this, and follow my Twitter at shiny underscore films if you want to know more. I'll see you in the next video. Stay shiny.